now yes. joined uh, by uh, Congresswoman Colleen Hanabusa. You, you could be there. Well, they be there. well no because they shut it down today. From what I understand, yeah, at least, at least <laughs> today, they send everybody home. Yeah. Uh, more than 15 years in politics, now fighting the fight on Capitol Hill and looking to land a seat in the U.S. Uh, Senate. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Thank yeah, you. and you just had a big old party yesterday, opening up the headquarters. That's right. Um, in the Chinatown area, there quite the crowd too. It was it was great. Yeah. yeah, it was great to have Senator Kaka there, yeah. uh, you know, who usually doesn't take positions in Democratic primaries, and neither does Governor Ariyoshi, who has taken a position. And of course, my favorite is Governor Cayetano. Yeah, he was being, he was fun. I he know, fun. Governor Cayetano. All right, so hey, let's talk about some of the issues um, right now on Capitol Hill. You guys taking it taking a break for the time being, which which not everybody's happy about um, because you know I know schedules change, but. Um, uh, unemployment uh, benefits is one of the big ones. Right. People wondering why that's taking so long. More and more people here in Hawaii being affected by that. Yes, uh, the people in Hawaii it started off with 1,900 around there, and but we do know that people are adding on at about a clip of 223 or so uh, every week, and there's a total amount of about 5,800 that they think will be affected very shortly. You know, it's. Um, what the issue is is how to pay for it because yes. there is this issue in Congress that whenever you spend money you have to find a way to pay for it and that seems to be where it's it's stuck uh, in the house well, I believe what they're going to do is they're going to wait to see if the Senate passes it out mm -hmm. and then uh, at that point Speaker Boehner will, will decide whether it will come forward that's the issue when you're in the minority in the house is that the majority controls the agenda and that's why unemployment has not come forward. You know, that's that's one of the things that you see that whenever a, a, a deal is struck, like the um, the budget deal is mm -hmm. struck, that's usually the best place to have these kinds of issues, because then there's so many things in it that people want everything else to pass. And initially, you had some concerns uh, with with the budget as far as military cuts and whatnot. But then when it came out to the omnibus omnibus bill. Right. Um, there were some better concessions. Yeah, you there. know, it's, it's because the budget itself, uh, the budget is usually a joint concurrent resolution that doesn't become law. The only reason why this one did is because we had sequester issues in it. And one of the things that uh, made it so that I, I had a hard time on it is the fact that it also extended a 2% cut to Medicare for another two years. So the Medicare cuts are going to be there for 12 years, and sequester is, is for 10. And uh, you're right. But that's a policy statement that we we've agreed to for, in this case, the next 10 years, whereas the Optimus is for the next seven months. Now, you've um, it boy, it's been more than two years now that you've been up there mm -hmm. in D.C., and hopefully uh, m uh, many years more. What is your take now after, after you, know, you got a little break, uh, back here at home revisiting with folks um, and thinking about uh, what everybody's priorities are and what's happening there in Washington, D.C.? What's your approach now, say, compared to when you first uh, arrive there in Washington DC. I think I think what I can tell people more is about what they see as the dysfunction mm -hmm. and and being part of it having experienced it especially in the house where we the democrats are the minority and what that means but also to tell people like in any legislative body it is relationships and it is the ability to reach across the aisle so one of the, the, the things that I share with people is, you know, everyone knows that I have been uh, very interested in and advocating for what the president calls the pivot to Asia Pacific. And I, and I share with people that uh, I'm the ranking member, the highest Democrat, on a series of hearings that we're having in the House on what the pivot to Asia Pacific means and how it affects, of course, the military, which is a major component of our economic base. And I said the person who went to bat for me is my Republican colleague who's been there a while, who is the, uh, the, ch the chair of the subcommittee on sea power, which is all the Navy. And he said, well, if we're going to do this, then Colleen should be the ranking member. And so it is that kind of support and that kind of uh, statement that's made to both leaderships that, that gets me into these positions. So, you know, there are, there are things that people will dig in on. Right. You almost got to recognize that. And it sounds like that quote, right? And give me the strength to know what I can change and what I cannot. And then, and then, and then it is, but it is that you see these when, when you come to some kind of common ground that people will say, you know, you, you, have a, you have an important voice on this, and let's listen to you. Well, glad you could come home for a little while so people could listen to you here. And I'm sure Thank enjoying you. your food, too. All right. That's thanks. right. <laughs> thanks so it's much for about food. Us. All right. Have a safe trip back. Thank you. Still ahead, a recap of the day's morning headlines. It is 6.51. We'll be right back.